Hello, and welcome to Unsolvable. In this week's episode, we'll be exploring the brutal murder of a London Playboy bunny, which has remained unsolved for more than 45 years. Mystery has always surrounded the death of 21-year-old Eva Stratford, with links to celebrities, the underworld and millionaires, and the horrific killing of 16-year-old schoolgirl Lynn Whedon. Eve Stratford wanted more from life than just waiting tables as a Playboy bunny, but just days after telling her manager she wanted to do something else with her life, she was found with her throat slashed so severely her head was almost severed. If you're ready, let's begin. Eve Stratford became a waitress at London's notorious Playboy Club in Mayfair in 1973, just aged 19, having left her family in Warrington, Cheshire, with ambitions of becoming a model. She was popular among the club regulars, and was even considered the boss's favourite for a while. Wearing a velvet bunny suit, bow tie and ears, she rubbed shoulders with the rich and famous. She desperately wanted to become a model, and when she was turned down to appear in Playboy America magazine, she jumped at the chance to feature on the top shelf magazine Mayfair, which was Playboy's British rival. Eve posed topless on the front cover of Miss March for the Spring Bonanza issue, branded as the most classic blonde we have ever uncovered. She appeared across nine pages including the centrefold of the magazine that had more than 460,000 subscribers for the March edition in 1975. The photo shoot, however, had angered her boss Victor, who suspended her from her role as Bunny Ava for three months. Her manager and former Bunny mother, Irene Morris, who had originally hired her, said Eve knew and understood why she was suspended. Irene said she wasn't upset, she understood what she had done and why it had happened. She told me she'd done it because she wanted to get into modelling. I said she could come back to work when the suspension was over, however she anticipated this would be her step up the ladder, therefore she wouldn't need to come back. After she was suspended, Eve went home to a flat in East London, which she shared with her boyfriend Tony Priest. Tony was a musician who began dating Eve in 1972, and the pair started living together in a room in a rented upstairs masonette apartment. The flat had four bedrooms, and each one was occupied for a while by a member of Tony's band, Vineyard. The group was originally called the Onyx, and is best known for supporting bands such as Queen and Finn Lizzy, and the band had finally split around the time of Eve's 21st birthday. After she was suspended as a bunny, Eve posed for two more photo shoots, one for a South Africa top shelf magazine, and the other as a model for a crime fiction book cover, where she had to look terrified as a knife was thrust against her throat. On March 17th, 1975, Eve had gone to see her agent before heading home buying herself a bunch of flowers on the way. She arrived home around 4.10pm, and around 20 minutes later, a downstairs neighbour heard her talking to a man. At about 5.15pm, the same neighbour heard a thud, described as like a chair falling over, and then footsteps walking down the stairs to leave the flat. Just 10 minutes later, Tony arrived home with his former bandmate, and was met with a horrific scene. Eve was dead. Her throat had been slashed around 12 times, so savagely that her head had almost been severed. She had been assaulted and tied up with her own stockings, one tying her arms behind her back and the other securing her ankles. The bunch of flowers she had bought laid next to her body. There were no signs of a break-in, leading the police to believe that Eve knew her killer. Eve's case 
was linked 30 years later to the murder of schoolgirl Lynn Whedon, who was killed as she walked home. Lynn Whedon, a 16-year-old schoolgirl, was found beaten to death six months after Eve Stratford. Neither case was solved at the time. However, after Lynn's cold case was reopened in 2004, new DNA techniques revealed that the same killer attacked both women within six months of each other. As a result of this link, the Eve Stratford case was also reopened. Lynn Whedon was attacked near a home in Onslow. She was on her way home after an evening out with friends and was assaulted after entering an alleyway around 11pm. She was hit over the head with a blunt instrument causing a skull fracture and thrown over a fence into the grounds of a electricity substation. Lynn was found the following morning by a local school caretaker whose house overlooked the substation. The authorities were contacted and Lynn was rushed to hospital, but unfortunately she succumbed to her injuries just one week later on September 10th, 1975. Since she had never regained consciousness, no description of her killer was ever taken. Also, the murder weapon was never recovered, which made this case seem like it would be almost impossible to solve and over the years, no leads were ever found. In March 2015, the police issued a fresh appeal for new information, which coincided with the 40th anniversary of the murder of Eve Stratford. On the 40th anniversary of the murders, investigating officer, Detective Chief Inspector Noel McHugh from Homicide and Major Crime Command made a direct appeal for the killer to come forward. He said, I firmly believe there is someone out there who has information about who carried out these murders. It is inconceivable the killer of Eve and Lynn has kept the perfect secret for 40 years. It's a heavy burden to carry and he must have let details slip over the years, maybe to a partner, a friend or a cellmate. And I would appeal to anyone with information to contact us. The family of Eve and Lynn had spent decades not knowing who brutally killed their loved ones and they surely deserve some answers. Noel McHugh went on to say, the man who carried out these murders is now of a different, older generation. I would imagine he has reflected upon his actions every day over the past 40 years. Does he feel guilt, remorse, a need to explain what happened. Sadly, Eve's parents have passed away, but this man has a chance to bring peace to Lynn's mother and father, now in their 80s. Detective Chief Inspector Noel McHugh continued urging the killer to examine their conscience and make the call. Despite the plea, the killer never came forward, and to this day, the murders of both Eve and Lynn remain unsolved. A £40,000 reward remains on offer for information leading to the conviction of those responsible. It pains me to say, but the parents of both Eve and Lynn have sadly since passed away, after having endured close to 50 heartbreaking years not knowing who murdered their daughters. It is not known whether the killer is still alive today, but if he is, he would likely be in his 80s and nearing the end of his life. And that's it for this week. Thank you all for watching. Until next time, goodbye.